All right, FAQ number 41. Can false converts get saved after the rapture? Very good question. Uh, turn in your Bible to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. I've been over this many times before, but this is I have to go over this again to, to uh, you know, make this point. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. We're going to read down through here a little bit. It says, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. So you get these people and they say, I'm a Christian, but yet they hate truth when you talk about the truth. They hate the King James Bible. They, you know, believe that evolution is true. Uh, I mean, all the issues that, that we are continually fighting with the lost world about, you know, and, and the, those things that are so important uh, to us as Bible-believing Christians. And you get these other people, I'm a Christian, but, you know, like you get these, uh, I'm not a fundamentalist. And you look at what the fundamentals are. The fundamentals of the faith, they're just like milk doctrine. I mean, the virgin birth, the deity of Christ, his blood atonement. You're, you're a Christian and you don't believe in the fundamentals of the faith? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, and you know, to turn it into this special camp that you're in, fundamentalist. There's, man, just, I'm a Bible believer. I go beyond, you know, where the fundamentalists go. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of fundamentalists that are lost. All right, uh, again, being a fundamentalist doesn't make you saved. But uh, just, I mean, it's just basic belief of the Bible. Give me a break. But you see the thing there of false converts today that you'll get them and I'm a Christian, but yet they hate the truth. That doesn't work. But, you know, so, so of course the argument here is when the rapture happens, verse 10 clearly says, or sorry, verse 11, and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion. Okay, what's the cause? Verse 10, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And, you know, I think it's more than just somebody saying, you know, I believe in Jesus. I mean, you've got Catholics that believe in Jesus. You have all kinds of people that say, you know, you get Jehovah's Witnesses coming to your door and they say, I believe in Jesus, you know. No, 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 no. I mean, you're not going to continue as a Jehovah's Witness. You're not going to continue in Roman Catholicism, you know. As a, as a saved Christian, all right, the spirit of truth is going to come and say, whoa, wait a second, this is bad, you know, and you're going to get out of that system. And I understand, you know, people have always argued with me, you know, well, you're saying that somebody has to come to the knowledge of the truth right away. No, I don't say that. I understand that, that the process of sanctification, I understand that's there, and people will, you know, come to the knowledge of the truth over the years, but I'm talking to get people that are saved for 20, 30 years, and they still hate the truth and reject the truth. Yeah, that's a problem. But what if you would have somebody who is in some modern big Babel building someplace and they're there and they really have a desire to serve God and they're really trying to do what's right and they're just completely deceived and they're, they're never going to hear the truth that they're a huge big Babel building. Um, what about somebody like that? The rapture happens. You know, they've just recently come into the Babel building and... They're just there and the rapture happens. Well, turn to Revelation chapter 6. We'll go there first. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. says here, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, Dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Okay, go over to chapter 7. You have the verses uh, 1 down through essentially 8. There you have the 12 tribes of the ceiling of the 144,000, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. Then in verse 9, After this I beheld and lo a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And 
they talk about being saved. So you have these people, there are, there's a, you know, the verse there, uh, first part, a great multitude which no man could number. And it's of all nations, uh, kindreds, and people and tongues. So there is definitely going to be a lot of people that get saved. You know, a great multitude which no man could number. You know, John's up there and he's going, wow, you know, look at all these people that get saved. Uh, that's going to be there. They're going to have a testimony. They're going to die for the word of God. So there are a lot of people that do get saved. And, you know, I think that there could be people that are in the modern Babel building system that just have never heard the truth presented. And they're there, they're trying to do what they feel pleases God and whatever, but they're so extremely deceived. Uh, those people, I think, could get saved. Uh, the ones that aren't going to get saved, the ones that are described over here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, those people are the ones who receive not the love of the truth. All right? In other words, the truth was presented and they rejected. Okay? Uh, it's not that they're ignorant and that they, I never heard this before. You know, I get people all the time writing me and they're like, I thank the Lord for sending me to your channel. I never heard these things before. See, that's the kind of people that are going to go into that time of Jacob's trouble if they miss the rapture. Those are the ones that are going to get saved. But then I get these people and they're just like, you're foolish and you're this and you're that. And I get, oh man, I can't even keep track of the names anymore that I get called, but uh, they hate the truth. And you try to give them truth and send them a link to this website or that article, or I try to say, well, I actually covered that and, oh, I've heard all this stuff before. I don't even hear it anymore. You're just wrong. You're stupid. You're a liar, blah, blah, blah. What's going on there? They don't love the truth. So those people, they're the ones that are explained here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. Okay, they're the ones that God is going to send them strong delusion. And you know what the funny thing is? A lot of these modern professing Christians, they actually want the Antichrist. You say, they want the Antichrist? Sure. Tell them to explain to you who they believe Jesus Christ is. They'll describe the Antichrist. He's a man of peace. He never judges anybody. He'd be totally cool and, and non-judgmental with other religions and things and kind of sit down and talk it out with them and stuff like this. They're talking about the Antichrist. He's going to bring world peace, you know. And you say, well, doesn't Jesus Christ bring world peace? Yeah, after slaughtering the Antichrist and his 200 million man army and basically going out and judging everybody at the judgment of the nations, Matthew chapter 25, yeah, we'll have world peace after, you know, Jesus Christ destroys the enemies and cuts off all the names of the idols and we basically burn the whole earth and, and then he restores it again, you know. Then we'll have peace. <laughs> and it's military dictatorship, by the way, for a thousand years. Jesus Christ in Jerusalem and his saints spread out all over the earth, you know, uh, carrying out his orders. You know, we shall rule as kings and priests, the Bible says, you know, of Christian saints. So, uh, can false converts get saved after the rapture? Uh, well, that depends on their attitude towards the truth right now. So that'll be it for this one. We'll see you in the next FAQ. I'll get it out yet.